Good afternoon all, Charlie here. Just thought I'd do a, a quick video looking at the uh, the variable frequency oscillator and the display as it's set up. Now you may recall I was waiting for these um, LED displays to turn up. Um, quite a nice little device actually, it uses a, a TM1637 driver on the back, uh, driving um, four seven segment um, LED displays um, with just four pins, so ground, VCC, data and clock. Uh, and the second half of this video we'll just um, have a look at the software but certainly uh, very easy uh, to run. So the um, the VFO and the display and the rotary encoders all being um, looked after by this little Arduino Pro Mini um, and what I've elected to do um, is to use um, four of the data pins so uh, 10, 11, 12 and 13 to drive the display. So the display is hooked directly into those data pins so for the ground, I've just set the data pin to be zero. For the VCC, I've set the pin high. And then the two others are for the data and the clock. Um, this display uh, maximum brightness, which I'm not using in the code, only draws 23 milliamps. So that's uh, well within um, the syncing uh, limits for um, each of those data pins in terms of what they can deliver in current. So um, I thought that was sort of a, quite an easy way. And it just made um, the actual soldering it up and configuration a lot easier. Uh, I make life a little bit hard for myself by not etching the circuit board and using that strip board. So I'm sort of a bit uh, constrained um, on, on trying to make things nice and small. Um, this display is currently, uh, you can set uh, levels from 0 to 7. Uh, and it's currently on uh, level 3. Um, it is really bright, but unfortunately the camera, the way the aperture is set up, it doesn't really show it, but it's certainly bright as. Um, so anyway, the way the moment the code set up, it defaults to, and if you recall, looking at this frequency right now, um, the leading 7 for it, this is a 40 MHz CW radio, is dropped off because it's always 7. So at the moment this is 70270 um, kHz, or 7027 um or 7.2 megahertz. You get the, you get the drift. So at the moment that's on coarse, coarse tuning, so that's tuning at one kilohertz at a time. And then if I do my normal, what I normally do, uh, push down and rotate, the little LED comes up there. Uh, that's only drawing two milliamps, so I'm reasonably happy with that. As you, this is the current for the overall uh, circuit here, so that's 65 milliamps for the Arduino, the display, the SI5351. Uh, and now we're tuning down there at the hundreds of hertz, just a sort of fine tune. Now if we go back to 27 and you'll you'll see the effect of that. Now if we just turn the radio up here, the monitoring radio. There we go. So like I say, got the fine tune there, and then when the light goes off, we're now into coarse tuning. So uh, that works out pretty well. Um, there's another little button there, sort of just hidden, just nice and easy to push. Uh, that cycles the brightness, so that's now on brightness minus one, so it's now to two. That's now down to one, and then it's down to zero. Um, again, that's pretty pretty dull, and um, a lot of the time when I'm out tramping, um, I use this um, at night, so it, when it's pitch dark outside, because there's a funny old thing, there's really no lights, um, and that really is absolutely suitable. Uh, the full brightness there which is really only half the brightness of, of what it can drive it would be way too bright um, with you know with no lights on so that gives you the option there just to, to crank down the brightness uh, or if we're out and about and you can see the, the effect there so on the minimum brightness so roughly 50 milliamps and then we cycle back around the full brightness jumps up to 62, 63 odds so that's sort of roughly 12 milliamps um, variation between the highest and the lowest um, interesting enough if you were to go, so for brightness level 4, 5, 6 and 7, now you're jumping up from that sort of uh, up to 23 milliamps for the display draw, and the brightness changes, honestly, in terms of how I can see it, very, very little. So um, I decided to take, because it's a portable radio and I'm trying to minimise current draw, um, I just went for that sort of happy medium of uh, brightness level 3 um, as the default. Uh, and like I say, with the option to reduce the brightness and um, the current consumption. So, uh, like I say, that's that's the current setup. Um, nice and solid, actually. I'm, I'm quite happy with the size of the display. Um, 
it looks pretty good and it'll be interesting to see uh, later on once we actually get the rest of the radio start to build up what impact that driver chip there may have uh, in terms of radiated noise uh, and any conducted noise that may come back down through the VCC line. Um, but we'll, we'll play that one by ear. But at the moment I'm sort of quite happy with that. Um, for a simple little radio, you know, I don't need to display signal strength or anything. So um, I think just for a, a simple frequency display, uh, that will work fine. Right now, I'll call it quits here, and uh, like I say, um, the second half of the video, we'll just have a quick look at the uh, the software. And so just, uh, that'll be the, uh, the Morse key. Um, just trying to work out exactly where I'm going to place. Uh, that dividing wall between uh, the receiver and the transmitter but I think we should be right um, this will be a cl I, I am very keen to look at the Class E amplifiers um, and from what little I've learnt already uh, as well as a very good article that was put out by QIP Labs very recently um, the, it doesn't look too bad actually and by all accounts uh, we, might, we should be able to go directly from the output of the SI5351, which would be clock one there, directly to the classy amplifier. So uh, if that's the case, then um, the transmit side over here will actually be potentially quite small. Um, but that remains to be seen. Early days yet, um, and just trying to make it all squeeze in is, is the trick. But at the moment, height-wise, uh, we've got no problems. That's uh, the two buttons here. So like I said, it's the frequency there. And I didn't mention that one, that'll be the volume control. And we'll have uh, sitting up here somewhere uh, the audio amplifier feeding out into the um, headphones. Okay, we'll just break there and then we'll have a quick look at the software and uh, we'll keep melting solder. Cheers all. Okay, so looking at the software, uh, very, very easy to use. Matter of including the TM1637 display library, um, that's freely available on GitHub. Uh, and referenced uh, through Adafruit. That one uh, works very well, just a matter of once you've included the library, um, when you initiate the object itself, you just need to tell it uh, what the clock pin is and what the data pin is, uh, and that's all you need to do. So for that, um, as you'll recall, I'm using four data pins to drive it for the four pins on the device. I'm using data pin 10 for ground, uh, pin 11 for the VCC, so we're setting that high, uh, data on pin 12, and then the clock on pin 13. So that 12 and 13 gets automatically called in here to create the object. Uh, within the setup area, it's just a, mat just a matter of setting the initial brightness, um, and if you recall, uh, that's from 0 to 7, uh, and I have an initial setting, if we go back up to the assignments, of 3. So I have an initial integer there, uh, a variable uh, set to three, so that's halfway up. Um, right, so and then into the actual main loop itself. Uh, what can I say here? Uh, we've got that digital pin that I'm using to uh, set the four levels of brightness. So every time that gets pushed, it just decrements the brightness by one um, and then rolls back over once it gets down to minus one. So zero, one, two, and three are the valid numbers that can be, at, uh, can be set to. So actually displaying numbers, uh, I won't go through this particular code here. Um, it's the same code I use all the time with the rotary encoder. Um, the only difference this time for this particular display, um, I have to break it down into, well, because I only want to display more to the point, um, the hundreds of kilohertz, tens of kilohertz, ones of kilohertz, and hundreds of hertz, so those four digits, um, as you can see here, I need to create a number out of those. But before I can create that number, I actually have to work out what those individual uh, integers are for the, for the three settings. Uh, and that's what this section of code here does. So it basically just breaks down um, frequency down into its individual uh, components. So by going through that, I end up with uh, a number for hundreds of kilohertz, a number for tens of kilohertz, one kilohertz, etc., etc. And then what I can do to display it, so display dot show number in decimal, I then have to create the number, and uh, that's what that's doing there. So a thousand times hundreds of kilohertz plus a hundreds times tens of kilohertz uh, plus ten times one kilohertz plus hundreds of hertz gives me those four digits. 
um, that I then display uh, on the display itself. And then that comma true there is just that any number that is um, a zero, rather than blanking the display, it actually shows the zero, which uh, looks a lot more prettier than just having, if for example, it was down to 50, having the first two um, displays uh, blank. So it just uh, looks prettier when that's sitting on true. And that's it. That's, that's all that's required to display a number. If I put in there, say, um, display show number um, one, with that comma true, then actually on the display, it will display 0, 0, 0, 0001. Um, so it's very, very easy um, to, to run that. Uh, and there's certainly quite a bit of information on the internet on uh, the different formats for displaying. But that's it. No, nothing more, nothing less. Um, so uh, I don't think there's anything more to belabor or to point out on this. Um, so now it's just a matter of probably working on the uh, working on the audio amplifier and then moving forward. Anyway, that's just a quick rundown on the display. Uh, and like I say, uh, it seems to be very good, um, low current, um, certainly nice and bright. Uh, unfortunately, the, the camera doesn't show that very well at all. Um, and once we get the rest of the circuit made up, we'll be interested to see how quiet it is from an RF point of view. Um, so in other words, that driver chip, it'll be interesting to see. Okay, 73 is all, and uh, we will catch you next time.